Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, we've made some significant progress this weekend in getting the basic motion platform up and running. So since the last video, what you'll notice is I've now connected the crank arms, these guys here, to the gearboxes. They have a, a taper system that clamps to the shaft of the gearbox but also prevents the crank arms from falling out that way. Uh, essentially it uh, tapers in towards the, the centre of the rig. Uh, we've then got the, the arms connected to the top assembly which I showed you earlier but now all, all connected. The only other change since the, the last video is I've got the platform and the controller connected to the PC now, not just the 5 volts supply on the uh, UPS system on the left hand side of the rig there. So uh, we are ready to switch this on and uh, I'll show you the first few, few steps, what it looks like and uh, hopefully some, some motion all being well. When you first power on the, the device, the motion controller, it goes into a, a state where it's basically requesting a homing position. So what that means to the servo motors and to the rig is the, the lowest home position essentially that it's that it's comfortable assuming. I'm not entirely sure how it calculates that it's if, according to the manual it's when it reads that there's resistance on the the rotational uh, actuators bumping into the for example the the legs of the motion rig feeling that resistance drawing extra current thereby the controller knows ah, okay well that's the limits of rotation I need to back off uh, from from that and uh, and it does so accordingly and then of course it only needs to go uh, roughly 180 degrees in the in the other direction uh, to to give it the full range of, of travel at least I, I think that's that's how it works so once the the platform is in its home position you've then got the option of switching the motion controller online which I will now do Okay, and what you're seeing there is the the motion controller going into its what's known as its standby position, which is where you can, uh, if, you, if you think of it, the the central position which gives it the most range of motion up and uh, up and down. So, with it connected to the computer, uh, I should be able to test out some of the individual uh, rotational actuators and uh, hopefully demonstrate a bit more movement. So that's the servo motor number one, and that's me controlling that just through a, a dashboard application on my computer, all the way down, all the way up. But also notice how fast it can move as well, which is, uh, I find really, really interesting. Uh, actuator number two, should be the one closest to the camera. And that's me shaking that by the way, that's it's quite sort of probably not particularly healthy for the rig to do that. Um, but again, it shows you the responsiveness as I'm dragging my mouse and cursor backwards and forwards, uh, I am able to control that through, uh, through my computer and then back to the center position. So, yeah, uh, yeah, clearly, clearly working, which is uh, which is great. I've had a, a few hiccups along the way, such as. Uh, initially when I mounted this top assembly um, I had it or I assumed incorrectly 
that these uh, these joints lined up with the uh, you can see the crank arms down there so if you imagine this rotated I don't know 90 degrees uh, uh, clockwise um, which of course it attached the rig absolutely fine but it it um, it was all sloppy because it had a lot of movement and travel whereas in this is how it should be with the um, uh, attaching to the you know the crank arms and the uh, and the actuators where they're in their you know the widest position when looking at the leg uh, bases uh, and now of course it's you know it's absolutely rock solid yeah i can i can sit on that and what what would happen is even with my body weight the servo drivers will detect the additional load there will probably be something like a you know one or two millimeters of of movement uh, and then of course the the motors will want to compensate for that so there's hardly any perceivable movement if i was to jump on top of the the rig which i'm not going to do uh it's uh, uh we've got this far without personal injury let's uh, let, let's keep it that way but i just wanted to explain how that works all right, and then when you're um, done with the, the motion rig, you switch it uh, offline again. I'm just gonna grab the, the handset here. Online, offline. And then it stops flashing. Uh, when it's reached that uh, that parked position and yeah that's it we're we're good to switch off the rig at that point and, uh, and and power it all down so i hope you found that interesting that's the that's the the basics of the motion platform actually accepting motion controls now from the pc so for the next few days i've got to learn all about how that works and maybe do some uh, you know some demonstration type test software uh, just to see how the how the platform behaves and I want to do that before starting to build the cockpit that screws on top of this rig because that's going to be um, it's going to be difficult to change and also once it's uh, once it's on there so I uh, it's easier to learn about the movement of the platform now rather than later essentially all right, I hope you found that interesting. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next video.